fucks, any pronouns. There's so much good horror out there. Amazing movies that chill you to the core. That develop a new fear inside of you, even. Some that make you question every shadow in the corner of the room. Films that leave you unable to sleep. Sure, you see or hear or feel something right outside your window, watching. Sometimes watching a full-ass movie is just too much, though. I get it. My brain is fried after an eight-hour shift of my day job. I can't focus through a whole I saw the TV glow or stop motion. Sometimes you want some smaller horror. Something quicker, more bite-sized. So today, let me show you all some horror shorts you can watch right here on YouTube. I won't be talking about any series, by the way, so no analog horrors or ARGs. Just simple one-offs, maybe the occasional duology, but no longer series. First, we have My House Walkthrough by Nana825763. The username really adds to the horror. It sounds like just some random user who uploaded a video of their home, making what is in that home so much more unsettling. You might actually recognize the name if you're of a certain age that was on early YouTube. They also created the infamous username 666 video. 16 years ago, fuck. The passage of time is the true horror. But also, the video is unsettling as fuck. Nana walks us through their home while a typhoon is in Japan. We see their room. The tatami mats are terribly damaged. There's a hallway, a Hina doll room, grandfather's room, grandmother's room, the altar, a hallway. The tatami mats are terribly damaged. The roof leaks. There is another hallway. The tatami mats are terribly damaged. Throughout, there's always this impending sense of despair, of something awful just around each corner. It is sad. It is unsettling. It makes you feel pity and disgust. You cannot look away from the chore. Next, we have Ignore It by Grim War Horror. It's co-written by Jeff Spazielli, based off his r slash no sleep short story. You're going to notice a woman in your home. You must ignore her. Here, we see a family setting down for dinner. Things are tense, though the father tries to act normal and encourages his family to do the same. She is back. They cannot look at the woman. Even when you catch a glimpse of her in your spoon, even when she reaches out and touches your shoulder, you must not look at her. The runtime is a little over six minutes, and it uses the time well, developing an uncomfortable suspense. Another that uses its very short runtime well is Dead Horse by Rot Sock. Coming in just a bit under four minutes, it was a graduation film for the University of the Creative Arts. It's a beautiful, simple art style that does so well in creating a specific, chilling atmosphere. Also, oh boy, is there some disturbing imagery. Be careful if you're sensitive to animal harm. Speaking of animals, remember how Steamboat really entered the public domain? We have a short that takes advantage of that in such a clever and enticing way with the vanishing of S.S. Willie by Night Signal Entertainment. It's about a lost 1928 documentary on the disappearance of a steamship that was previously thought to be lost forever. This is honestly a very clever use of the source material, playing off the actual silliness that happened in the original short to make it gruesome, and doing so in a way that doesn't make the horror goofy or like a low-grade creepypasta. A lot of effort was poured into this. It's definitely clouded in unease. Another that I believe is based off another tale is Dark 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 by Lopside Animation. The inspiration seems to be a dark dark tale by Ruth Brown. The short is beautifully animated, with a narrator who chills and enthralls. The art style is so gorgeous and atmospheric. The narrator, as we're taken through dark dark surroundings, really brings us all to life, makes you feel even the narrator is not immune to the horrors lurking in the dark 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 dark. Other Lily is on the Let's Read channel, animated by David Romero. The actual runtime of the short itself, including credits, is barely over five minutes, and it manages to get under your skin within that time. A young woman is babysitting her little sister on a stormy night, and things quickly turn bizarre. I won't spoil anything, but we get to see from both sisters' point of views, which is done so well and really adds to the horror. We also have some great stylistic choices, like how the characters are drawn compared to the backgrounds, and moments like this where things are distorted. Finally, we're at the last one, 
The Incomplete People Lecture by Vintage 8. It's framed as a PowerPoint presentation from a university professor. His final lecture, in fact, as he disappeared soon after, along with some of the attending students. I adore the style this is presented in. It wraps a sheen of nostalgia around the growing unease and horror. Incomplete people are exactly what they sound like. Apparitions that look like regular people, but they're missing parts of themselves. A torso, a head, limbs, a face. Their goal seems to be getting noticed so they can claim replacement parts. Gruesome. I will say there are follow-ups that came out as I was writing this script, but they're not necessary to enjoy this one. Though they do add their own enjoyment, and if you liked the first short, I recommend the others. And that's all the horror shorts I wanted to introduce you all to. There's so much good indie horror on YouTube, I highly recommend doing your own exploring. Trust me, once you watch one of these, you'll be led to other gems. If you find a really good one, or hell, if you've made a really good one, let me know. People are doing so much good independent short-form horror, playing with tropes, expanding the genre. It's great to see. Inspiring, even. Maybe this will even get some of you to start creating your own. I'd love to see them. Thanks for joining my Lucid Screaming.